Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about max aerobic speed. Now, this is the second video I've made on the subject, um, and that's because traditionally we're looking at running um, and calculate our max aerobic speed. So take a quick little step backwards. Traditionally, if you look at the laboratory setting, we're looking at VO2 max for calculating someone's um, aerobic capacity um, or their ability, and this is normally done on a treadmill or a bike. Um, and you'll get their, their ability to, to utilize oxygen. And we'll also, along with this, get a velocity at VO2 max. So now this is a good thing, because particularly if you are using a bike or treadmill, you can get the speed at which you're traveling when, uh, when you reach that peak point. However, in a practical setting, it's more traditionally used for team sports um, and running-based sports, done outside five to seven minutes. Um, and it gives you a way to prescribe training. However, with the growth of mixed modality training, what I mean by that is the growth of functional training, the likes of CrossFit, High Rocks, um, and all of those things, it's whether we can use the same approach um, of calculating that max aerobic speed to prescribe training, whether we can use that approach with ergonomic, uh, ergos such as uh, rowing machines um, and C2 bikes, etc. So if we look at the calculation for running, we take the distance in meters and divide it by time in seconds. So that's uh, the example here. If my mile took me 405 seconds, I get a MAS of 3.9 meters per second. Now that's quite nice, but it also means I can prescribe. So if I wanted to run at 120%, I'm going to multiply 3.95 by 1.2. That gives me 4.74. That's the equation over here on the right. So now I've got my meters per second, so I calculate how many seconds I want to do. So 15 times 4.74 means I must run 71 meters in that 15 seconds to hit the desired speed. Now you can do that for lots of different percentages, and there's various methods that I've talked about prescribing in the other videos. Okay. Looking for the calculation with rowing, it actually starts off exactly the same. So you take the distance you've traveled and divide it by the times so in meters divided by second. Sticking with the example from before of 1600 meters in 405 seconds, we know that my mass is 3.95. Now I might want to work for 90 seconds at 90% of this score. So I'm gonna work out 90%, so 3.95 multiplied by 0 0.9, I know that I'm working at 3.51. I'm then going to multiply that by 90 seconds. So I know that I need to travel 315.9 meters in that time. Now, I could just work straight off that, but it's actually quite hard um, to set my pacings off that. And this is why the rowing machines are brilliant, because I can actually calculate the split that I need to hold. So I know exactly whether or not each ball I am on target. And the way that happens is we just back work the calculation. So now that we know the distance and we also know the time we want to do it in, so we know we want to go 315 meters in 90 seconds. All I'm going to do is divide the time by the distance and then multiply it by 500. So that means uh, how much time it takes to do one meter multiplied by 500 meters. That's going to give me my split. So I can then look at this. So 90 seconds divided by 315 meters times 500 gives me 142.5 seconds. Now 142.5 seconds works out as two minutes and 22 seconds. So my 500 meter split is two minutes and 22 seconds. Now I know this looks like a lot of maths and a lot of workings. So what we've actually done is we've built a sheet that will calculate it for you. There's an example on the next bit of this video and a link in the comments below or in the description below. So do check that sheet out. Um, it's your cheat sheet and your guide for calculating your rowing splits um, and calculating your MAS on a rowing machine. So take a look. And then we're also going to look at a quick way of prescribing from that uh, in the next few slides on here.
quite traditionally with Maz for running and team sports, you probably will have seen anywhere between 15 seconds on, 15 seconds off, right up to 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. This is a very common method used and you used to increase um, the total running time up until about five to 10 minutes. Um, and then look at blocks of maybe four minutes working, working through multiple sets. However, what I want to talk about today is a method that I've used with rowing myself. Um, and I think it works quite nicely for the, the longer intervals um, on the machines. I found that the sprint intervals don't correlate quite as well. Um, and I never quite got the same feeling as when I was doing it on feet running. Um, so three different long interval styles here. Four times 90 seconds at 100. Five times two minutes at 95. And six times three minutes at 90%. Two minutes rest in between for the, those top two and 90 seconds on the bottom. Now you can do this the same of building that, accumulating that volume. Um, so I actually tend to start with the six times three um, with two minutes in between. Um, and then I have actually built up to two sets of that um, and then decreased to five sets of two and then two sets or two series of that. And then fi finishing with that, that four times 19, building the volume again. And it's just quite nice long intervals, gives you time to settle into that pace and really starts to let you allow you to to understand those pacings um, and how they feel so have a play with it there is no perfect prescription and sometimes you might find that the maths isn't quite right and you need to adjust as you go um, but it just gives you that head start and gives you that framework to build upon and tailor to each individual client so put any questions in the comments like i said check out that sheet and yeah hopefully this helped